Hey, it's your girl Bobby J here, and we are talking about Queens Season 1, Episode 11, I'm a Slave for You. And you know who said that? Valeria said that to Naomi. She said, you just want everybody to do what you say. Uh, something about y'all, you want everybody to be a slave for you. That's what she did say. Anyway, I noticed in this episode there was no Muffin, no Sadie. And Valeria's husband was nowhere around. They did mention uh, Brianna, but that was about it, about Brianna being in Costa Rica. But before we delve into this episode, honey, reach out and touch that subscribe button. That's right. I'm asking you to subscribe to my channel, June BLC, and hit the notification bell and let you know every time I upload a new video. Then I'd ask you to... After watching the video, to give it the thumbs up, the like button, you know, and also leave a comment on how you feel because you know we all have our feelings and thoughts about things. Put down in the comment section how you're feeling, and then I ask you to share the video with a friend, coworker, loved one, you know. Anyway, we're going to help Barbie J's channel grow this year. So that she reached like 2,000 subscribers. Okay? And I could only get there with you guys. So let's start hitting that subscribe button. Okay, so this episode, how did it start off? It started off with, well, it started off with it, it looking like a TV show or something like that. And come to find out, Jill is in this show. But the head actress in the show is the person who... Jill is liking to be part of Nasty Girl Records. So I keep forgetting that Jill was doing acting after the, the group kind of split up. Where after, you know, Brianna got shot. And so she's been acting to make money. And she was in a show that had this that 21-year-old girl. And she was playing Anna Cadabra. <laughs> she had this wand, Anna Cadabra. <laughs> you know, but she could sing really well. And her mom was on, always on the set and always making her take these um, Adderall pills or something. And the girl never wants to take them. She, I guess she doesn't like taking pills. I don't like taking pills, so I understand. But I don't know if those pills made her feel some kind of way or something. Why did the girl didn't want to take them? But Jill noticed that. You know, she noticed this happening all the time. So Jill decides one day to talk to the girl and she's talking and sharing with her and she tells her about how hard it is to deal with you know controlling parents and she said it took her 40 years to to break away from hers and the girl was like dag but she's like you don't really need your mom's approval because you're 21 and she said yes i do i literally do and she was like why what am i missing she said have you ever heard of a conservatorship so and you know what that is. It's like someone who's like put over you by a judge to manage your financial affairs and your personal affairs, you know. And I guess they like almost like you're a danger to yourself. So they need somebody to monitor you, monitor you, basically. And I think that's what they did with Britney Spears. Isn't that what Britney Spears went through with her father? I think that's the same thing she went through, too. I didn't pay much attention to it, but I knew something was happening. Anyway, so Jill knows the girl knows how to sing and everything. And um, so she talks to the ladies, you know, she talks to them about the girl and they let she let them hear her sing. But she's doing that TV show singing that sounds corny, you know, <laughs> and while she, and while she's pitching this to them they, and, you know, they're like, no, no, no. And next thing you know, Valeria's phone bling, you know things and the girl and got herself arrested but we learned later that she um after jill bails her out jill goes and bails her out her mother doesn't because jill wants her to sing for nasty girl records like i said so she the girl tell her i did it on purpose i just needed to get away from my mother for a little bit just for a little while i wanted to get away from her you know so jill was trying to tell Naomi and Valeria, you know, maybe we need some diversity in our audience, you know. She said, this girl Madison has like 11 million followers on Instagram. And, you know, and that could help our business, you know, help our company. 
And so, you know, they were like, yeah, well, you know, but she told her, what did she tell them? She told them, we really need someone who could sell out arenas and, and touring, you know, she said touring is where you can make some real money. And uh, Valeria didn't say anything, but Naomi said, um, you know, we're never going to sign a star. You know, maybe we needed some raw talent and some unforgotten talent and we could turn them into a star. So that's what they were working for. But um, I don't think this girl, uh, Madison, she was a TV star. I don't think she was known for her singing, but she must have sang on there because Jill heard her and knew she could sing. But anyway... They allow, um, they allow Madison to come and they're talking to her. No, they're talking amongst each other at the, I guess, is it, is that their studio or something that they have? I, I don't know what that room is, but she was there and the girl is going, look, they're arguing, we, they're not arguing, but discussing her and behind her back, even though she's standing right there and the girl is like, can y'all hurry up because my mom's going to be here soon because her mother has a tracker on her phone. She said, I'm sure she'll be in here. So do y'all want to just keep talking behind my back or y'all want to hear what I have to say? And then they let her sing and she tore it up. There was Naomi was playing the guitar and the girl was singing and it was more of a rock, rock type of rhythm or something, but she was good. And they were jumping up and down and everything. And, I mean, she was awesome. The girl was really, really good, you know. So um, they liked her. And they said they want to sign her. And next thing you know, you hear banging on the door and her mother shows up with the police. And then she said somebody was fired. I don't know if Jill got fired from the show because she had her. The lady was like, I was so worried. Like she had kidnapped her or something. I don't know. Anyway, Jill helps her uh, with an attorney. The girl wanted to get out of her conservatorship. So Jill helped her with an attorney to pay for it. And she's like, why are you doing this to help me? She said, because we want to sign you to the record label. Okay. So the girl knew what it was all about. So when the girl went to court and they were fighting and the mothers told a story about the girl having a gun, Madison having a gun to her mouth. She, you know, she did a low blow. The daughter didn't think her mother would ever bring that up, but the mother did bring it up. But the girl thought it was easier when they had extended the conservatorship. The girl put the gun to her mouth thinking it'd be easy to just kill herself. To, that would be the only way she could get out of it. But the mother used that to help try to help her lose the case. But then the mother talked to her and she dropped the case. So the girl basically won and was free to do her music with them. But what happened at the end? Well... What happened at the end is uh, she comes and they're waiting for her. They're so excited. They're happy for her. her. She got her freedom. And they said, what's too so long? What's the matter? She said, I hate to disappoint people. Well, why would you be disappointing anybody? Well, once everybody found out um, that I was free of my conservatorship, all the offers started coming in. And she didn't want to pass up the $5 million offer that she got from one of the companies, she said, I can't pass up that kind of money. Mind you, this girl is worth $80 million. And the mother, when she came to get her, said, look, we are worth $80 million and we don't have time for this. And they said, her, hello, she's worth $80 million. Not you. She is. You know, so that's what happened. And the girl basically let them down. Then we have Valeria. We didn't see Valeria's husband, like I said, but Valeria, um, the, uh, Naomi said, since, um, who is it? Zadie and, since Zadie and Muffin, Lauren are working on their albums. I think she called them Muffin, are working on their albums. They could, um, release v Valeria's album early. That's what it was. So they was going to release her album earlier, let it drop earlier. And she was like, no, she wasn't comfortable with that. She, I guess she was nervous. She, she, she felt like her, her album wasn't ready, really. And Naomi's like, what are you talking about? You have a great album. And she said, the only thing that's important is um, all, it's all about the launch and how you launch it and when you launch it. So Eric says, you know, her, her singing, everything has gotten better. 
and that's why they were able to land her a guest spot on the residence's album record the residence record and who's the residence you say the residence is supposed to be that he's like the hottest like uh king of latin on the latin charts right now he's supposed to be the hottest thing going in latin music on the male side i guess and so she was so thrilled you know and they were saying this could help her career and help her album sales but for her valeria the excitement was being recognized by a latin artist as a latin artist she said it was like she said it means the world to her that's what she was saying she was that that's the part that got her even though everybody else was talking about record sales she just being recognized and being able to rap in spanish that was her goal and she, that's what she wanted to do and eric told her if she could win over uh his fans his fat fans then her album was going to be a real hit i tell you it's going to be hot but unfortunately when she got to the studio with those um what's his name the guy residents and his friends and she told him that she wanted to um rap in Spanish. He said, no, I want you in English. And she kept explaining her case why. And he was like, do it how I want, or you could just bounce. I said, oh, no, he didn't. Yes, he did. He told her it could, she could bounce. And he said, that's that. And she she walked out. She bounced. She, she bounced her booty and her titties right up out of there. <laughs> yes, she did. <laughs> Then she went back again to make things right because Naomi had a talk with her. I said, you got to make this right because they don't have any money and it's, the, it's their labels taking a hit, you know? So she went back to talk to him and he gave her another chance and she gets up there to start rapping. And what does she do? She goes back and she raps in Spanish anyways. And he's looking like, what the freak is she doing? And he's looking at his boys. And then he just started enjoying it because it sounded good. And he got to watch her rotate and stuff. And I think he had called her a gringa, a gringa. And she, um, she was like, I'm used to people thinking that's what I am. She said, but then I showed him what I got, you know, as far as her talents. And, um, there was something I was going to say about that. Oh, my TV had messed up on a couple of those words. And she said, I'm not even going to dignify that with an answer. I don't know what she said. Every time I tried to play it back and play it back, it messed up in that same spot. So I didn't get to hear what he said and what she wasn't going to dignify with an answer. But anyway, she did the song in Spanish. It sounded real good. They were grooving to it and everything. And then he dropped her from the song. So she was done. You know, but then she did go back again. She went back again to explain to him something he had said to her, which made her really want to do something in Spanish. So after them talking together, what he did is he produced her Latin song and she wants it to be her first single released. Because she let everybody hear it, Eric and, and Naomi, and everybody thought it sounded great. Then we have Naomi and JoJo and Eric. And like I said, they were, um, when ladies were sitting around at a table, they were talking about trying to find another artist and stuff. And, <laughs> and Naomi made the comment as, you know, stars fall, stars fall out of the sky all the time. Meaning people show up, there's this, people could be made stars, I guess. And you see, you can work with them and you can see their greatness and you just got to cultivate it, you know. But anyway, she made that comment at the beginning and it actually happens at the end. Now they show scenes of Naomi um, on her laptop on SoundCloud. She's listening to find out some raw talent. You know, she's trying to find something, but she's having no luck. I said something, someone, but she's having no luck. And while she's trying to listen to the different music out there, she gets a call from the dean of JoJo's College, Hillman College, and she's so excited. Oh, what do I owe this, you know, call for? And she's like, what? JoJo hasn't been going to school for over two months. 
And I'm sitting there going, Jojo live right in the house with you. How do you not know all of you with a mother and a father? Y'all don't know she's not going to school. And I was just like baffled by that. And to me, if Jojo feels she had a relationship with her mother or even her dad, why it take two months you didn't go and tell them, I'm not going to school. Who's who's paying this tuition money that you're allowing to go to waste? I think of children when they do things like this. It's like, is it your money being wasted? Is the state money that you get, you know, some kind of assistance? Whose money are you wasting? See, I don't mind when you do it when you're wasting your money. But don't be dropping out of school when you're wasting other people's money. I have a problem with that, honey. And every parent should have a problem with that. And a person should have a problem. You want to drop out or take advantage of somebody and take money from people. That's what you're doing when something like that happens. Because if you don't feel like you want to go to college, then you talk to your parents. You got to talk to your parents. But don't just not go and miss all of those days, all of that wasted money. She can't possibly pass any class that semester after being out for two months. You know what I mean? So that's why you talk to your parents. You have to try that at least. Anyway, I'm sorry, I digress. Um, her, her excuse, um, JoJo's excuse was she just ain't feeling it. She's like, I, f- I ain't feeling it. She been hanging with some of her Cali kids, some of these Cali kids that she met since being in California. You know, remember they brought um, Brianna's house. Her mama brought Brianna's house and they've been doing hip hop because she said, you know, we've been doing stuff. And Naomi was like, oh, drugs? You're doing drugs? She said, no, hip hop. She said, I love hip hop. I could rap. I want to be a rapper. And Naomi's like, no, you staying in school and that's final. And she wanted to, she said something and it seemed like Eric kind of agreed with her. Like, and she was like, uh, you've been doing the parent thing for a minute. Why don't you just stay out of it right now? And then when she wanted him to agree with her and say, she got to stay in school. She's like, come on, Eric, back me up. He said, now I could talk. I was like, yeah, now you can talk. But he's he had to learn. He's so busy trying to be her friend because he's new at that and don't know her. You parents, we can't be our kids' friend. We have to be their parents. It's hard sometimes. You don't want to be mean. You don't want to be hard on them. You don't want to be treat treat them like your parents treated you. But you look how you turned out. You ain't turned out too bad just because your mom and daddy was hard on you. Just because you got whoopings and punished a lot, you know. So, you know, uh, I'm just saying, you know, (laughs) he was just like, okay, I got to learn. I can't be a friend. I have to be a parent. Exactly. So, uh, what's her name? Jojo said, I'm grown. You can't tell me I'm going to do what I want to do. You know, you can't tell me anything. She said, as long as you under my roof, you will. And that's when Jojo walks out and Eric is like, okay. She's like, we have to be a united front in front of our child. He said, yeah, but I have feelings, uh, opinions as well. You know, she said, well, I want your opinions to be held, but we need to talk about them first, you know, and I understand that. But she walked out and said, I'm an adult and don't need your permission. And I'm trying to figure out where that was that she went, like a studio where she was going to be living if she was finding somewhere else to go. Anyway, so Jojo later goes to Eric and she asks him to help her lay down a track because she wants, she's feeling she's good and wants to see, you know, if she, if she's at the level that she thinks she is. So he makes a deal with her that she would go back to school or something like that. So he said, but I can't back you up from quitting school. And she said, I don't, I'm not going regardless whether you do that or not. I was like, dang, like I said, who money she wasted. So after they finished the track and he said she was good, you know, he saw the passion in her eyes. She seen it in her mother when she was younger and stuff. So, he said, I got to take this phone call. So he's on the phone and she gets on his laptop and types it in and sends it, sends it to SoundCloud. She uploads it to SoundCloud. I said, oh man, what is she doing? Because he said, we got to sh- let your mom hear it first before you do anything with it. And she had said, okay. And then she did what she wanted. Anyway, so Naomi's downstairs and she's up there still on SoundCloud Cloud herself looking for raw talent. And she hears Jojo. And she didn't know it was Jojo until she saw the picture. She was like, oh, this this person could sound like we could work with them, you know. And then she see the picture of her and Valeria looking and saying, what? That's Jojo. 
and Eric is looking guilty, trying not to look, and he has to explain to her what happened and what went down. Mm, mm, mm. So people were going off on her, you know, you know how people, the haters are going to hate on there. And Naomi was upset. She said, they talking about her body and all this stuff. And this is the stuff I was trying to protect her from. I didn't want to have her to have to go through this. And now you did this. You did this to her. Why this grown man looking at her body and blah, 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 blah. You know, she was very upset because she, because these people were saying these things about her child. And so... Jojo comes downstairs and she's like, baby, how you doing? You okay? She said, I don't care what they say. I don't care if they hate me. She said, look, the industry is misogynistic and problematic anyway, you know, and I don't care. She said, you don't care that they listen at your body and, and, and not your talent. She said, you feel I have talent. She's like, yeah, baby, you got talent. You know, she said, well, my, that's what it is. It's all about the talent. She said, I don't care what they say about my appearance. So a little later, you know, they had that talk and a little later, um, I don't know where Jojo was in the studio somewhere. And Naomi went there to talk to her and she says, I want to give you, you know, she said, Hillman is such a great opportunity. And you went through so much to try to get into that school, girl. You play that classical music. I heard you at your performance. You was getting it in and stuff. She said, I do miss it a little bit. She said, well, I'm here to, uh, you know, make you an offer because uh, Jojo was like, what, if you're trying to get me to come back home, I'm not coming. She said, well, that ain't why I'm here. And I was like, oops, no, she didn't. Cause she probably was like, oh, you don't want me to come back home, <laughs> you know, but, but she made her an offer, you know, to, for a way for her to be a rapper and to stay in school. And she said they wanted to sign her to, um, nasty girl records. So she was so excited about that. And, they hugged and made up. And she said, I'm a I'm mom. I'm still learning. Just like you're learning, I'm learning. She said, I mean, 10 years just went by so quick. And you're a grown woman from that little girl. So she, you know, they worked it out. They talked. And that was wonderful. So I liked this episode. It was really good. It was a good episode. But the disappointing part for me was when the, the, the little girl, Madison, went with another place. After they did all that work, Jill did all that work to get her out of her conservatorship and and um then the girl went with the money instead of went with instead of being loyal to the people who helped her let's put it that way because she spent her own money jill spent her own money to do that for her. the girl said i'll pay you back i'll pay you back but anyway i thought it was a good episode y'all let me know down in the comment section what you think and don't forget they won't be back until february something they're they're back in three weeks Three weeks. I think it was February 8th. So this was another great episode of Queens. I really did enjoy it. And I will see you guys in the next video. This is your girl, Barbie J, saying peace.